Hello, you're listening to Lists and Other Things That No One Asked For with Jesse Barbin, your weekly mini podcast about books, movies, TV, growing up, etc. Thank you for listening. Well, all right, it's another week and things must be ranked and listed. This week, we're listing the best places in your hometown in ascending order. I grew up in a suburb on the north side of Albuquerque, New Mexico, so anything I say will be colored by that perspective, and this list will reflect a distinctly suburban experience. Your experience is likely different depending on where you grew up. I think suburbs are all pretty similar, having met a few other suburban kids. I've also met some small town kids, and we have some things in common, but also some things are very different, such as partying in a field. I've not met a lot of people who grew up in a big city, but the few times I've been to New York, I've always been surprised at how different it must be to grow up there. Almost every time I rode the subway, there would always be teenagers jumping on with a speaker, and then they would dance and then pass around a cup and collect money. It blew my mind that that's what you could spend your time doing on a Friday night as a youth in New York. I haven't stopped thinking about it since then. But anyway, without further ado, here are the most important places in any given hometown. Number five, the place where you drive around. Some people call it the main drag. I'm sure that's an outdated term. I don't think they even called it when I was in high school, but I, hopefully that gives you the picture. Uh, when I went to high school, they called it cruising, I think. It's hard to remember back that far. Some people would even call it throwing a cruise. Like, let's go throw a cruise. Basically, you get in a car with as many friends as would fit and play loud music and drive around, hoping to see some girls or whatever. We'd have to go into the city for any actually decent cruising. The main drag in Albuquerque when I was in high school was on Montgomery Boulevard, which is the street that runs east to west in sort of the middle of the city. After a successful night of cruising, whatever that means, you could stop at Sonic on Montgomery, which is open late, and get you an ocean water. I had super nervous parents, so I didn't get to go cruising very much. So it always held a certain allure for me. Number four, the music store. I think with the retail apocalypse happening, these places don't exist so much anymore, or at least not how they were in the early 2000s. But when I was young, I liked nothing better than to go into Grandma's Music and Sound on the west side of Albuquerque and go play the electronic drum kits. As long as you weren't playing too hard, they would let you play for hours. You could also get down some less expensive guitars off the wall, plug them into a medium expensive amp, and play a few riffs. Maybe a little smoke on the water. If you wanted to play a more expensive guitar, they would give you a little chaperone. A grandma's employee would sit and watch over you to make sure you didn't scratch anything. I bought my first Line 6 amp there. I also bought an Epiphone Les Paul there. Now it's been turned into an urgent care, and I miss it whenever I'm back visiting. Your home park. There are parks all throughout town, and after you've lived there a while, you'd know which ones are sketchy parks with drugs and which are the calmer parks. Eventually, you start to think of one as your home park, where you go to have barbecues and hang out with people and maybe shoot baskets and maybe throw a football. Mine was the River's Edge 2 Park because it had a basketball court and a covered eating area and barbecue grills, and it could accommodate pretty much any event you wanted to host on a Saturday afternoon. We launched model rockets from there. We rode bikes in the arroyos behind it. We had my brother's graduation party there. The park also overlooked the sewage treatment plant for the city, which as a young person I thought was hilarious. Some of the aforementioned model rockets went adrift in the wind and landed in the sewage treatment plant, which was also hilarious. Number two, your local venue. My town didn't really have a designated live music venue, which was tough growing up there and playing in a band. You'd have to rent out the VFW hall or play on the gazebo at the city park and hope the cops didn't show up. We once rented a generator from Home Depot and played a show in a park where there were no outlets. We'd play in people's backyards. We played so many backyard shows. Every now and again, you'd get invited to play at a church, which was always a dicey proposition because afterward, they'd want you to come to youth group or stay for the lock-in. I always loved venues in the city. There were lots of venues like the Sunshine Theater, which was kind of a mid-sized theater. I saw Anne Berlin there and Social Distortion and Black Label Society. There are also lots bigger venues, amphitheaters. For instance, uh, my first show was Space Hog and Pearl Jam at the Tingley Coliseum with my friend and his dad when I was super young. When I was old enough to drive, the venue that became my favorite Albuquerque music venue was the Launchpad. They had all-ages shows and hosted all sorts of cool touring bands. They would also let local bands like us open and give us the thrill of our lives. I've mentioned this already before, but just so you know, I saw Fall Out Boy touring on the Take This to Your Grave tour 
in 2004 there, and later my band got to open for the Ataris and meet Chris Rowe. Last but not least is the public library. If you're a quiet, introverted kid, the public library is your favorite place. Sometimes in fiction, there will be this character of a mean, shrewish librarian who is always shushing everyone, but I have to say that I have never encountered a librarian like that in my life. Librarians have always been super chill and helpful to me, always pointing me in the right direction. When I was in middle school, I went to a workshop at the public library on how to use the internet. I always did the summer reading program as well, and I remember that they always had good prizes. That could just be in my memory, but that's how I remember it. As an adult, I feel more comfortable in the public library than any other place. I walk into the public library every few weeks to pick up my holds and hand over my returns, and I breathe in and think, these are my people. Next week, I'll be evaluating my vibe and ranking my vibe strengths and weaknesses. So rank your own vibe, and we'll talk about it together next week. Thank you for listening to Lists and other things that no one asked for. If you have a suggestion for a list or an idea you'd like me to talk about, please fill out the Google form in my bio and I'll get to it. I'm available everywhere at Jesse Barberin. New episodes every Monday. This dude is cutting his grass like right now.